with some mature makeup application frustration. <laughs> that's a big word. That's, that's a big combination. Application frustration. And I want to come on and show you if you're struggling with um, under eye concealer, if you're struggling with uh, color correcting, um, applying makeup, and I'm mostly going to be referencing cream makeup, um, but this could also translate over to uh, liquid conceal, liquid makeup, and liquid concealers. I want to tell you what it's all about if you're if you're struggling. So this side of my face I already have done, and this side of my face we're going to do. And what we're going to talk about is how you apply it and how you blend it. All right, fingers. Your fingers are a really great way, <clears throat> a great tool to add to your makeup bag. Yes, your fingers, add them to your makeup bag. Obviously, wash your hands before you do all of this. We all know that. But what we want to do is use our fingers quite a bit, especially with mature skin. We want to make sure we're using and taking advantage of a damp, prepared perfector sponge or a beauty blender. And then it's also about how you use brushes and what type of brushes. So that's what we're going to talk about. And we're going to do this side of our face. We're going to color correct, conceal, contour, lip and cheek, and even some eyeshadow. All right. Well, if you haven't met me before, welcome. I hope you stay around for this. My name's Karen, and I love teaching about mature skin, makeup, and sharing tips. So let's get going. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is applying contour if you are into wearing contour and um, how to use and apply the makeup contour if it's cream especially <laughs> all right so one thing if you have a shorter forehead you don't need to put contour up here if you wear your bangs you don't need to put contour up so all of this is what i want to get in to us is that it's based on you so when you see anybody including me or younger gals or anybody applying or doing makeup um, just because they put contour up here doesn't mean you do contour up there just because they do it a certain way or swipe it here or swipe it there i want you to look at your own face and you need to determine where you need the makeup and why okay so why do we wear contour well contour is basically to add a shadow so if you do have a taller forehead like i do um, a longer forehead or taller, whatever you want to call it. Um, adding a shadow up here along your hairline um, helps drop the eye and lower that forehead and kind of frame the face. If you have a wider face, you can bring contour down. If you have more of a hollowed outside of your face and narrow, don't bring your contour down. So what I'm getting at here is that what you see another um, woman or a younger gal or wh whoever you see doing tutorials, we're not gonna copy them exactly. We're gonna learn why they're doing it. Hopefully they're sharing why they're doing it. And then we're gonna learn how that's gonna work for you, right? Because all of us look different and all of us have different issues with our skin and all of that. Okay, so contour, if you have a taller forehead, it's gonna just bring your forehead down, frame the face. So I wanna also talk about the how you apply makeup with the, um, versus tapping and pressing versus a swiping motion. So you may see a lot of gals swipe their contour on like this. They'll tap it in and they'll go swipe, 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 swipe. Well, I suggest if that's not working for you that you um, try pressing. So even if a brush is much wider, you can just pinch the brush, you can make it work for you and just press instead of doing the swiping. So since a lot of us have texture and things like that along the side of our face, usually around our temples and our jaw and ear from sun damage and things, pressing is gonna make a really big difference uh, versus swiping. And whenever we swipe makeup on and we have um, wrinkles or thinner skin or texture, we're just kind of, it's getting, that's where you start to see it settle into those lines. But if you press, you're actually pressing it on, you're getting much nicer coverage, it's gonna be a little bit more skin-like, and see all those wrinkles, if I was if I was swiping, look at all that stuff. So we don't wanna do that, um, but I'm just going ahead and pressing it in, okay? Um, same thing down here, now you could, if you wanted to, because your jawline usually, you know, you have a jaw there that kinda of makes it a little taunter, but the same, same concept, kinda of doing the swiping back and forth without really even thinking, that's another thing. Take a minute and look at your jawline and your cheekbones and don't just go in and start swiping. Stop and say, well, where do I need to place contour? Okay, well, I want a more lifted cheek, so I'm gonna place it like this. Down here, well, you know, I have a little jowl that dips in 
and there we go. So I'm going to place my contour along my jawline from here back. So I'm gonna tap in and I'm gonna just kind of press it right along my jawline, but I'm gonna stop kind of right there because I don't wanna make that look even deeper and emphasize my jowls. And then I'm gonna bring it down and, and, and bring it down my neck, okay? So that's a great, that is important to do that, okay? So easy to press it on, but also looking at your own face and deciding where do I need the product and why would I wear it that way, okay? So pressing, pressing, no swiping, that's one, one tip. Um, so another tip I wanna talk about is uh, adding any type of color correcting or you know this orangey peachy type shades that we like to call them color correctors um, to help with maybe under eye discoloration, um, maybe darker sunspots, maybe you have areas that are very red and things like that. So um, if that is the case, again, and you see um, somebody come in and maybe swipe their finger into something and just swipe it all underneath and or take a tube of color corrector and just rub it all under, I want you to stop again and ask yourself, well, do I need color corrector completely underneath my eye? So you want to look at your eye and what discoloration you want to color correct and decide where do I need it. So you look at yourself and you decide, well, I think I need a little right here and a little out here, but you know, really here is looks fine, right? I know I need some on, you know, I've got a big sunspot here, I need some here. And another thing I wanna talk about is using it not full force. So don't use things directly out of the bottle. So if you have a tube of color corrector or a bottle of liquid makeup um, with a wand or a little spongy thing, or even here where you're having cream makeups like I use and taking either a brush or your finger and using it directly to your skin, it's too much makeup. And that's the other tip on how to apply, okay? So use your finger, but what I want you to do is get yourself like a sheer cream or even an, a, a lightweight eye cream if you're using underneath the eyes, or even take a little bit of setting spray and spritz it in your lid of the setting spray and then just tap your finger so you have a little bit of setting spray on your hand. I prefer to use like a sheer cream. And so this is called a balm and I'm gonna put some on the back of my hand. And even, even if you don't mix it with a balm or a cream of some kind, just taking the product out of here and placing it on your back of your hand first is that you're going to tap in and you're going to apply so much less because most makeup like this is very pigmented and there's no reason why I need to one waste it but really the reason is, is I don't want to just willy-nilly start swiping on and applying or liquid and rubbing it makeup that I don't need if I don't need it in a certain area then I don't need to apply it there Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit here out of the pan. This is a little color corrector shade. I have it on my finger. I'm gonna go on the back of my hand, kind of right here. I'm gonna swipe it there and then I'm gonna tap. So I can use it directly first, or if I have a lot of texture or under eye, um, oh, crepiness, then add in either a little bit of setting, setting spray to the product just to kind of make it a little bit more, well, I guess kind of sheer also, but not only sheer, but just helps to pat it, to press it in and for you to use less because we don't need a lot. We really don't. You know, we actually think, I think sometimes when we get older, we think, oh, well, I need more makeup. You know, I, I, I've got so many issues. I need more makeup. When in fact, we just need to use the right shades of makeup that can do the right tasks and in the right way, okay? So again, using a sheer cream like this, which is a balm, it's called balm, or a, a light eye cream and applying off of your hand is important. Same thing goes when you are doing um, like a brightener or a color or a concealer, you know, something that's really light. Same thing, if we see, see someone take a brush like this and tap into that brush and then go swipe, swipe, swipe. I wanna ask yourself, you need to ask yourself, I'm not gonna ask yourself, you need to ask yourself, do I need to add a big old swipe 
of light color right here. What does my skin look like? What does my face look like? You know, do I have a lot of texture here that maybe I don't want a big old swipe of a light concealer right here. Maybe I have a lot of um, like, like these wrinkles and these fine lines and taking a really light color and swiping it there is just gonna emphasize that. Maybe up here on my forehead, I have a lot of pores and number 11s and taking a big swipe of a makeup and swiping it on, that's not the answer. So for me, for you, it, you know, so you need to decide. So I like, again, to take my finger and I'm gonna tap into my correct, or my mm, concealer, brightener. I never call it concealer because I feel like it's not, it doesn't conceal. And then first thing I'll do is I'll put it on the back of my hand. So see how, look at that, that's so much. Tap, kind of tap it around so you just have a little bit on your finger. Then you decide, well, where do I want some brightener? Well, you know, I'm kind of, kind of dark and kind of, I don't know, looking a little grayish through here, a little sallow right through there. So I'm going to take a little bit of that and I'm going to pick it up from the back of my hand and now I'm just going to tap it on. Now, if I get too much, I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to continue to press and tap that on. Let's say I want some brightness over here for a lift, but I'm not going to, I don't want it to get into these uh, crow's feet or these laugh lines. Then I might take you know, some of the sheer color, pick a little bit of a sheer, not color, but a sheer cream, put that on the back of my hand, pick up a little bit of that or take it out of the bottle or the tube, whatever you're working with and kind of mix those two together. And then I'll come out here and I'll apply some light and some, some concealer and some brightness out here, okay? Maybe I want a little bit up here at the top of my, underneath my brow, but, and, or maybe even underneath my eye here a little bit down under where I have kind of more of some eye bags and I'm just gonna press. So there we have it making it a little bit less of just a willy nilly applying it where we don't need it or applying too much, okay? The other key that's gonna help you a lot is to use especially if you're using cream makeup, is to use a damp beauty blender. When I mean damp, I mean it's really not damp even. It's been, it was wet originally and I rang it out and, then, and I put it in between a towel and then I let it sit, you know, for several hours, something you want to do in the morning or even maybe do it overnight. Sometimes if I just get my perfector sponge or my beauty blender wet and I fill it up and I rinse it out and I clean it for the night and, it, and it's just wet, I just set it um, on my, you know, dish towel and I just let it, air dry overnight and then behold in the morning when I go to do makeup it's perfectly soft poofy and it's just lightly damp this is a key is to use this to press and lift any makeup into our mature skin where we may feel like we put a little bit too much or we're seeing texture is to press in and really I'm just tapping and pressing I'm not rubbing it off I'm just pressing that in to help so that's key is to get yourself a beauty blender or this is a perfector sponge um, that I use, I love it. Okay, so back to applying your main shade, okay, using a brush. Um, first off, we want to use the least amount possible. So again, we don't wanna take a brush like this and swipe in to the makeup and then start swiping it all over. That's gonna be way too much makeup on our face. We, first of all, I just wasted so much makeup and that is just a mess. I'm gonna to have to clean that brush out. I'm gonna take a, a, small, a brush like this and I'm gonna just tap in, just tap, tap, and then I'm going to do that tap, tapping or stippling motion where I would need foundation coverage. So you decide, you look at your face and you say, well, where do I need some? Okay, so I need a little here, right here across my nose, you know, underneath my eye here, on my cheeks, my, you know, high parts of this cheek area, down here on my chin, I definitely want some, and I'm pressing and stippling it in instead of swiping it on, and definitely along here, and up here. So we're just gonna determine how much do you need, but see this motion here? This is like the best way to apply your makeup. I mean, if you wanna use your fingers and take it out and actually you know, dot it on or swipe on makeup like that, that is fine, but you're gonna have to work a little bit harder to now move all that thick line of makeup that you put. So then you need to still take a brush and now you need to go in and you still need to press 
and get that cream makeup, especially if you're using cream, to move, okay? And so now I'm just using whatever I swiped here and I'm getting it to move because it's sitting on top of my skin and so I'm kind of doing a lot more work at this point to just, move, to just blend in those three little swipes I put there. When if I would have just tapped in and used my brush, that would have been so much easier. All right, this sunspot here, you know, same thing, like color correcting or trying to cover things like that. You know, first start with just a little bit of a shade that you're, you know, if you have a shade that's kind of this peachy color, just put it again on the back of your hand. And then I don't really need it all over the side of my face here. I, I just need it pressed in over that sunspot. So kind of build it up by pressing it in where you need it. And then you can go back in if I need, maybe I need a little bit of my main shade over the top just for that extra coverage. But I don't wanna have a lot of makeup, you know, just in one spot. So you really wanna just kind of use your fingers and or go back in and press in with your sponge to kind of help lessen the appearance of that discoloration that you have, okay? All right, I don't wanna keep you too long. I want, want you to kind of get some of this. What about, um, let's see here, what, what do we got here? What about lip and blush and things like that? So um, I think it's so much easier to apply lip color with a brush, like a, a lip brush or a line brush, but you can apply it quickly with your finger. You know, just take a color that you like, you can even mix them and just, tap them on or blend them on your lips. Nice thing is with cream like this is that you can use it for both lip and cheek, which is so great. So placement on your cheeks. Again, um, you know, not all of us want maybe want to put our cheek color on the apples of our cheeks. Some of us do. It depends on if you want more of a fuller cheek, a fuller cheek, or do you want more of a lifted cheek? Or you just need to look and see, well, where do my, where are my cheeks? My, you know, my face is shorter or rounder or more square or more heart shaped. So you want to determine, and a great way to do that is by placement on where your eye is. So if you look straight into your mirror and you look down, here's the outside of my eye and I come straight down. And here's where I had my contour or this part of my ear you know, from the top of the ear to the bottom of your mouth. So you've kind of got this little shape. This, I guess it's, what is that, a triangle? <laughs> so I like to just use one, my outside of my eye. So I'll take my finger and dab in and I'll come straight down and I'll put a dot. I love to mix blush, so I'll take another one now that I have this one and I can put one here, and one that's a little different color, a little more sheer, one here and then I can put one here. So now I've got my blush kind of going up this way, starting about here, and then I'll just again take my brush and start pressing. Again, if we start rubbing, one, two, of, two things could happen. If we start swiping, we can either disturb and move all that makeup underneath maybe that we had maybe we had color corrected under here or something um, a lot of times we end up removing all of the blush and blending it too much when we do this type of thing um, a lot of times if we have you know again texture and things like that in this area we're really just getting that blush to not blend well it's looking patchy but if you use your your brushes and to stipple and press and then just kind of keep moving that around. You can bring it up. That'll get you a really nice, nice blend without it looking, again, too cakey or not looking patchy and things like that. So that's really a great way to do that. So finally, um, we did that, that, that. Let's, let me show you just really quick some eyeshadow. Um, same thing, you can do um, just a really quick eyeshadow. I'm gonna grab a eyeshadow brush and I'm just going to pick up a little bit of this kind of pink color. It's just a matte pink, has no shimmer in this one. And I'm gonna use this one to go on my lid, but instead of swiping it on, again, if you can pick up on the cue here, it's uh, swiping versus stippling. And we are, as mature women, need to be on team stipple or press, 
So please be on Team Stipple or Press, and I'm going to do that on my eye as well. Even though this is a fluffy brush that I could I could swipe back and forth and do this windshield wiper, well, you know, um, my eyelids have a lot of crepiness. They're very thin, and I don't get really nice coverage when I swipe back and forth. It skips again all of all over that. Okay, so take and just do this. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that was a good tip. Yes. So then, now what I can do is kind of the same thing, is just tap in if I wanna use a shimmer shade um, as an accent um, out here in the outer corner, same thing. I'm gonna tap and press it in. So we're just tapping, tilt my head back if I need to see where my crease is. And just take, and then just do little tiny, if you want to blend, you can blend by just continuing to tap over but if you wanted to blend a little bit quicker, just do little tiny, little tiny upward strokes. Nothing that's too aggressive in the back and forth wipey. <laughs> and you can build that up as little or as much as you want. And then finally, um, another great way to apply like shimmer eyeshadow or even this lighter shade in the middle of my eye if I wanted to make that a little bit brighter is to again, use your finger and pick up your shades and press them on. When you press, especially if you have crepey eyelids. Crepey eyelids mean their eyelids are very thin, they've thinned out, and they are now, when you, whenever you pull on them or drag something across them, it pulls everything, the whole eyelid moves with you. And of course, whenever you pull something over bumps, right? If you're pulling something or swiping something over bumps, um, you end up skipping. So I'm um, skip, 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 and then it's not gonna look even and it's gonna look, and you're not gonna like it. So um, CJ, these are, this is Paris, which is just a matte pink shade. Um, the brand is, is Saint, and then I think, I don't know what the other color is. <laughs> I'll look really quick. So just, it, I'm just gonna use my lid to pop these out. I'm just gonna take my lid, pop them out because they're magnetic pop this little guy out so I can build my own palettes, whatever I like. And this one is cranberry. And then I can, you know, so you can build your own eyeshadows, which is so cool. And they just pop right back into my magnetic palette. All right. So um, that is how you can, whoops. I think I just got eyeshadow on my forehead. Um, just really easily change some simple application and blending tips if you're struggling. And if you're not, and what you're doing is, is great, then no, I, but this was more if you're struggling with your makeup and you're struggling with um, getting it to apply nicely or it's over applying or whatnot, then try some of these techniques. Um, fingers using a beauty blender, stippling or pouncing or tapping, whatever you wanna call it, instead of swiping. And then of course, using product not directly from the tube or from the, the wand or even from its uh, its little palette or its, its tin is to take this and apply it first to the back of your hand. And if you wanna use it directly, full on you can. And if it's too much, then mix it with like a sheer cream or a sheer balm of some kind, okay? And then we had a quick question, tips for drying cream applications. So drying cream, this cream sits will sit on top of your skin. So cream makeup sits on, on top of our skin. That's what gives us a very, you know, a little bit more of a natural glowy finish, uh, it looks, uh, it's not seeping in and uh, evaporating, but you just want to, when you're done, I like to use setting spray. So it's not wet, it's pressed into my skin, but it's, if I want it to last longer than, um, and not smudge, I'll use a setting spray and I spray my face. So I'll show you how to do that really quick. I always shake my setting spray up very vigorously. And then when I go to use it, I always pump down vigorously. I don't do a dribble pump. You know what a dribble pump is? It's like when you just go ee, and a little dribble comes out. So you wanna shake it up and then you wanna hold it back, arm's length. And then you want to spray it on your face. 
let that dry. It looks, you know, much more shiny right now because my face is damp from the setting spray, but then let that dry and that helps set the makeup for the day. So I hope that was, I hope that's what you were asking about that. Okay. I'm going to just stay on. I'm a half hour in and I didn't want to go much longer than that, but I wanted to stay on and answer any questions. I will save this as, um, as a replay, if you want to watch it or if you came on late, uh, let me just recap. We talked about uh, how to apply your makeup if you're tr struggling with application, with things looking cakey or too heavy. Um, just do that, okay? And then just do the different application tips with, with what we talked about. Sorry, I'm all fumbly here. And then uh, you can always message me or reach out to me if you have any other questions. Just just send me um, a DM, I guess, a direct message, they call it, <laughs> and let me know if you have questions. So, oh, I do have a quick question. Let me see here. Oh, I can't come to ba Bali. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I've never been to India. That would be really, really cool. All right, so if I missed any questions, um, I will go back. I'll be able to see them later, and I will go back, and I'll reach out to you and answer them for you. And then please let me know if I can help in any way. All right, have a great day, and I will see you next time.